And now I'm going to hand you over to the awesome East Forest, who's going to be talking about sound as a technology. Hey friends, it's East Forest. I just wanted to take some time to kind of talk about what I mean when I when I say music as a technology or music as a tool. And I think the way to think about this is to think about, you know, what, what is a tool? A tool is an instrument that we essentially are using to, to do something. There's a kind of intentionality with it. And what, what, what's interesting about music in general is that the fact that like we're inherent in this question in itself implies that we don't fully recognize the water that we're swimming in as fish because music arguably at this moment in time is more prevalent and pervasive on this planet than it's ever been before and it, it, it's so ingrained in our life and if you if you add in the layer of just sound in general and the role that it plays in our lives it's you know it's, it's everywhere and so we're using it in largely unconscious ways, but a lot of these are also quite obvious. And the obvious can be devious to us. But if you think about, uh, we use music to get us amped up or excited before, you know, maybe at a gym, or you use a lullaby to uh, bring someone to sleep or to soothe. We use music in cinema, in films, in entertainment as a way of not just amplifying the emotion of the content, but you know, it actually is the mechanism that from the two dimensionality of the screen creates this third dimensional tether from the screen with a sound wave to touch your body and connect you emotionally to the story. Uh, we could go on and on and how it's just, it's, it's everywhere. And on top of that, you think about sound and the role it plays. Again, it's, uh, a fundamental part of what it means to be a human being just these these mouth gestations and sounds that i'm making now going through these microphones as vibrations to imply those to you through additional projection of sound and then you you interpret what those sounds mean as micro metaphors into meaning and story and construct and narrative in your own heads that's a pretty big word salad but it you think about even just how everything began in our origin stories, everything from the Big Bang to God spoke, and then here we are in the great reverberation of all that is. And you can even go into the Eastern side of it, where even our thought patterns, a sort of this internal form of sound, or certainly like the word that we speak, the power of our word as a form of manifestation and create, creative energy passing through us creates another form of resonance that is echoing, reverberating. In this room right now, you can probably hear some reverberation of my sound bouncing around these, these walls. And there's an energetic form to that as well as when you speak things into the world, word, world, it has meaning, it has power, uh, because it's not nothing. It is, a, it is a form of matter of sound that is now interacting with other sounds and other forms of creation. So all that being said, how can we use it more intentionally, music and sound as a tool, and for what purpose? So the first thing you have to do is, is determine the purpose. And I, I would ask you, like, think of a time in your life when you may have used uh, music, let's just say, for a particular purpose. Can you think of a time when you used music to soothe yourself or to amplify an emotion, like to make you feel more calm or to increase the depth of a feeling or you want to feel like more excited or uh, you're feeling kind of down and you reached for music to kind of transmute that feeling. So take a moment and just see if you can remember how that felt. And in doing so, try to pull up the feeling of it. Like how did it feel in your body 
when you were listening to that music. Good. And for myself, you know, I use music as a tool for myself in creating it and practicing it and performing it. Quite selfishly, it's a way for me to stay sane and to feel connected to uh, like the larger sense of myself, to the things beyond just like the confines of my mind. It's something about channeling through that creative energy, that creative force. Um, it, it, it enlivens something in me. It's a kind of watering the garden that, you know, we're all creative beings. And in essence, when we allow creativity to pass through us, even in the form of like a good conversation or free writing, or you're making anything, uh, I feel that that is a core part of what it means to be a human. And so when, when I'm making any kind of music or just playing music, it might even feel like a chore to step into that space, but it feel it's like a kind of exercise. It feels good when I'm, when I'm done. Um, and so, a, a, you know, an extreme, so to speak, example of that for me is when I step into the ceremony space. And what I mean by that is when I'm like leading a group of people in, in a shamanic ritual or a psychedelic ritual with music and sound, or when I'm creating music for that space, um, I, I'm, I'm doing so to, to create a specific kind of tool, music as a tool that can really take the, the listener inside into the internal space. So I'm sort of deciding that's what I want it to be. And I go into that space and bring in the invocation of all the things that are larger than just my mind to open myself up. And then I'm there to improvise and I'm there to allow what wants to come through and to really create a kind of sound and musical narrative that is, it, it's a sonic architecture that I, I'm, my North Star of it all is like what enlivens that part of me that feels infinite and that feels uh, very spacious and sort of dancing between uh, hopefulness and longing. It's a middle ground, like a, a numinous liminal space in the middle. So that's an example for myself of how I'm trying to create music as a tool. But when when you're experiencing it and you're listening to it, just on a very simple level, the key that unlocks the real power of the tool, music as a tool, is your choice. It's a form of saying, I'm going to actively listen as opposed to passively listen. I'm going to choose to, to put my attention onto the elements in the music and just by attuning and focusing my attention onto it. And this isn't rocket science, you know, by saying, what do I hear? There's a sense of curiosity as I listen. Oh, I noticed this new element, this new melody just came in. Oh, now it went away. Oh, there's another layer, another instrument came on top of that. Oh, there's a, now there's maybe a, a rhythm that's coming. Is it getting faster? Is it getting louder? Oh, how does that make me feel? Oh, that's interesting. What else? What's next? Sort of this idea of what's next, the curiosity of the listening experience is where we're going with this. So what you want to do is take a moment to just invite the fullness of the listening experience in and to allow it to just be what it's going to be and, and, and bring up the feelings that it's going to bring up. And just that invitation of saying, I'm going to actively listen is a very powerful step. And it, it takes us out of like being uh, sort of like victims in our experience where things are just happening and sounds are coming to us and we become these active participants where that element of your choice is, it's a kind of opening a door or an invitation for things to not just speak to you, but to have more meaning because you've initiated that first step of saying I'm here and I'm, I'm listening. So when you listen to uh, the music I, I can offer or East Forest music, maybe that's something you could try and, and just see what comes up. You know, that step of creating the invitation from you is a powerful one and a valuable one. So I invite you to do that 
and we can start to see like how music can be a tool, how it can be a technology. And there's, there's many disparate forms that that can take, but uh, the fun of it is like, it's malleable and it's really up to you. And it's up to like how it wants to meet you in the moment. But like a fish that's swimming in the ocean, you ask them what the water is, they're like, what's water? You know, just start to ponder that question for, your, for yourself as you walk through the world and all the sounds that are around us in addition to the music and the melodies that are there. It's like, what is the role of music and sound in my life? And how does it affect me and my body and my mind and my soul as I walk through it, as I swim through it? And just see what that brings up for you. Because a lot of times it's sort of like we don't recognize what's right in front of our face or it's all, all around our ears at all times. Even the silence, you know, the absence of noise that we sometimes find ourselves in and how that affects us. You know, when we take certain layers away, how does that make us feel? Does it uh, feel good? Does it allow for something else to emerge? Because I like to say that spirit speaks in silence. Spirit speaks in stillness. When I say spirit, let's just call it the numinous, the fullness of our being, uh, that which we all are, the totality of all that is. It needs that spaciousness to be able to, to, to speak because it speaks in a form of subtlety and metaphor and uh, stillness and silence. So let's just leave it at that for now. And I appreciate you all listening. And... Um, yeah, keep choosing to listen. Absolutely beautiful words there from East Forest. Um, and as he states, you know, become more aware of what we listen to and listening with intention can make all the difference.